just at loudspeakers. Run the YPAO room correction and you're set. After reading the 149 pages thick manual, the term Swiss Army receiver popped up. If this product can't satisfy your stereo receiver needs, you have a serious problem. For years I have focused on the digital front end of a stereo. I know I also did compact network active loudspeakers, provided they offered sufficient quality. And tipped my toes into the network amplifiers from time to time. Something I plan to do more often in the future, to start off with this Yamaha network receiver. Buckle up, for there's a lot to tell. Let's see how the R-N2000A, which I call N2000 from here on, is to be used. Of course it needs a pair of loudspeakers connected. If you want to play music from your computer, it can be connected over USB, Toslink or SPDIF depending on the outputs available on your computer. USB is most used. Alternatively, you can use Apple AirPlay 2 or Bluetooth to send music from the computer, tablet or smartphone to the N2000. Of course, this has quality restrictions. Apple AirPlay supports sampling rates up to 48 kHz, while Bluetooth uses lossy compression. If the computer is connected via your router to the internet, you can play internet radio or music from streaming services using the designated software on the computer. But there is a better way. If you connect the N2000 to your home network and install the Yamaha MusicCast app on your smartphone or tablet, you can play internet radio and streaming services you are subscribed to without your computer switched on. And you can use your smartphone or tablet for other things as soon as the music is playing. If you then install a DNLA server program on your NAS, you can also play music from it. A good DNLA server program for music is MinimServer. There's a free version and a paid version that has more features. By the way, you can still receive FM radio and digital radio using the built-in receiver. Digital radio in Europe and some other countries means DAB+. I'm not sure whether there are localized versions offering for instance AG radio. The N2000 comes with an infrared remote control and as said can be controlled from the MusicCast app on a smartphone or tablet. Of course it is still possible to connect a CD player over either SPDIF, TOSLINK or analog connections. Last but not least a TV can be connected over either HDMI, TOSLINK or analog connection. HDMI can be used if you use the HDMI ARC connection on your TV. ARC stands for Audio Return Channel. The N2000 cannot output video of course. Other digital and analog sources can be connected too as we will see later on. The Yamaha design language has been constant for years now, with slight adaptations over time. A bit like Audi updated their design language over the years. The N2000 has, for instance, the same knobs for bass, treble, balance and loudness my preamp had 45 years ago. Still it looks modern. Both black and silver versions are available. In both cases the strip along the bottom of the front is black and hides an OLED display. The sides are finished in piano black. It has a width of 435 mm, is 473 mm deep and 233 mm high. Put it on scales and you see 22.1 kilos, 48.7 imperial pounds. On the front left the power switch, with below it the 6.3 mm headphone jack and the 3.5 mm jack for the supplied measurement microphone. Then the speaker select button that steps to pair A, pair B, A plus B and speakers up. The meter selector lets you select for peak or VU reading, dim the lights or switch the meters off. The input selector steps to all the inputs. On the remote control inputs can be directly chosen which is great for people that want to use a universal programmable remote control like those by Logitech Harmony. Then we get the bass control, the treble control, the balance control and the loudness control. 
The latter is a Yamaha all-time favorite that lets you compensate for the diminishing sensitivity of the ear for low frequencies at low volumes. When pressed, the select button opens the menu on the display, where it says MC Link on this photo. Turning the knob shows the menu options and pressing it again selects that option. This button lets you return from the menu. When pressed for 5 seconds, it lets you pair the N2000 to the MusicCast app on your smartphone or tablet. The preset select button lets you select FM and DAB Plus stations music on your server and net radio stations you have programmed earlier. The Pew Direct button lets you bypass the various adjustment functions. Bass, treble, balance and loudness, settings made via YPAO, operation of the option menu and setup menu. It also dims the front display when no operations are performed. When using Pew Direct Transmissions to the MusicCast network are not available except for audio of the network content and Bluetooth devices. The volume control is the largest control since it's most urgently used. Along the bottom there's a plastic strip with behind it the OLED display that shows the chosen input, the volume setting when the volume is changed, information on the song playing when streaming and so on. On the right function LEDs for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. A lot of options means a crowded rear panel, but it's not too bad if you take it step by step. Let's start with the IEC mains input, then above it the HDMI input to connect to the HDMI ARC output on your TV. It sends audio only from your TV to the N2000. The two little connectors on the left of it are for service purposes only, so you can forget about them. The network connection needs to be connected to your home network. The USB connector to the left of it is to be connected to your computer if you want to connect it directly and not over the network. Then further to the left the coaxial SPDIF digital input that can, for instance, be used to hook up a CD player digitally. Then the optical toslink digital inputs. These can be used to connect a TV over optical if that doesn't have the HDMI ARC output, or any other digital source that has a Toslink output. Then we get three analog line inputs, line 1, line 2 and CD. Here any analog audio device, save a turntable, can be connected, for instance the analog audio outputs of a TV or CD player. The turntable having a moving magnet cartridge can be connected here. The earth wire needs to be connected to this screw terminal. There also is an analog preamp output to feed an external power amplifier and a subwoofer output. To automatically switch on the external power amp, this trigger output is used. For FM and DAB plus radio reception, an antenna needs to be connected here. Two pairs of loudspeakers can be connected using rather sophisticated speaker terminals. They accept banana plugs from the rear, bare wires when unscrewed with the ring here in red pushed to the amp and forks when that ring is pulled towards the nut. Everything inside and out of the N2000 stage build quality. A lot of attention is paid to vibration control. Take for instance this frame that connects the front panel to the rear panel. That wasn't needed per se since the top plate also fixes the front and the rear. But the top plate is fixed to this frame too for extra rigidity. Or take this 3 mm thick brass plate that is sandwiched between the bottom of the transformer and the inner chassis. Transformers have a tendency to vibrate a bit since they work with 50 or 60 Hz AC voltage. Vibrations can cause electronic components to vary their properties and thus cause distortion. The brass plate is here to dampen vibrations. The transformer is mounted in the middle against the front away from the preamp section. Behind it the rest of the power supply with the electrolytic capacitors in clear sight and the rest below that. Then to both sides the power amplifiers for left and right mounted against large cooling profiles. The amps deliver 90 watts 
over 20 to 20,000 Hz in 8 ohm and 145 watts in 4 ohms. When measured at 1 kHz and at 10% distortion, as some manufacturers do, it delivers 120 watts in 8 ohms and 185 watts in 4 ohms. I'd rather stick to the really usable spec of 90 watts in 8 ohms and 145 watts in 4 ohms over the entire audio band. Then against the rear panel, three circuit boards stacked on top of each other. I didn't want to take it fully apart, so I only described what I found on the top board. Left next to the HDMI input, we see a Panasonic video chip that handles the HDMI ARC input and CAC control. Then we see an NXP ARM Cortex microprocessor that most likely does the system control. The very large Yamaha Cinema digital signal processor is most likely handling the YPAO room correction and is not used here for Dolby or DTS sound. The HDMI input only accepts stereo PCM sound. So if you use that input, set your TV to output stereo PCM over ARC. Next to the DSP we see an SD RAM for storing room correction data. Another nice detail, two thick rods that most likely are for grounding two separate parts of the circuit board. Then somewhat further to the right, the Burr Brown 4202 analog to digital converter capable of doing 192 kHz sampling at 24 bit resolution. It's there to convert the analog inputs so they can be processed by the tone control and the room correction DSP. The ESS9026 Pro digital to analog converter is from ESS Technologies. It is the highest spec version from the ES9028 mobile version. One thing left to show. Special feet support the N2000. These are silver plated brass feet of which Yamaha claims they improve the lows. Being a receiver with 12 physical and virtual inputs, 9 more if you count the streaming services, choosing an input is made simple by offering direct selection from the remote control and in the app on which later on more. The HDMI, Toslink and SPDIF inputs support sampling rates up to 192 kHz. USB supports up to 384 kHz 32 bit and DSD 256. The same goes for audio via the network. Although you can select music from streaming services and your DNA server on the display with the front panel controls or informatic remote, using the app is a lot easier. When you start it up, it shows the rooms where you have Yamaha MusicCast equipment installed. In my case, that's the living room only. When chosen, it shows recent sources where the server stands for DNA server. Recent shows the last played songs. Then you can select playlist you made. At the bottom of the screen you see all 21 sources you can select here. Of course for streaming services you do need a subscription. Like for Cobus I selected here. Let's discover new pop and rock music in new releases. As you can see Cobus works inside the MusicCast app. For Tidal Connect the external Tidal Connect app is started while the music is routed to the N2000. Selecting server gives access to a DNLA server on either a computer or NAS. In my case I use the Minim server on a Synology NAS. Let's go to artists and search for Alice Cooper. It shows I have five albums by Cooper. I select killer on the text while the album art loads slowly. This gives the now playing screen where you can set repeat, random play and set the volume of the N2000. In the sound settings you can switch on the YPAO room correction, select speaker sets, select a sleep timer, switch on the audio information and the display of the volume level. I switch on the audio information and that is now visible directly below the cover art. Let's go back to the main screen and select Net Radio. The high quality stations can be found here. Let's look for the Lynn Classical Station and see it still is only MP3 at 320 kilobits per second. There's a lot more to do in the MusicCast app, 
like coupling it to either Amazon Alexa or Google Assistant for voice control, controlling other music cast players and coupling them together for multi-room playback. And before I forget, it does gapless playback too. All in all, MusicCast is a versatile environment as long as you stay in the Yamaha MusicCast environment. But that goes for most other systems too. I started testing in my setup 2 where the N2000 was connected to a pair of Acoustic Energy Radiance 1 loudspeakers over Kimbo 4PR loudspeaker cable. Connected to the sub out was the RHEL T5 subwoofer. The network switch was the Optone Audio Ether Regen with Optone Audio Ultra Caps 1.2 power supply. The Synology DS1890 Plus NAS with DX517 extender runs Minim server. The equipment is housed in a target rack. I started with the room correction switched off and the subwoofer dialed in manually. The N2000 sounds powerful without sounding loud. It has a very good microdynamics for its class. It has excellent pace and rhythm and excellent resolution, especially in the mids and highs. Then I ran the room correction. It has the impossible acronym YPAO RSC, which stands for Yamaha Parametric Room Acoustic Optimizer Reflected Sound Control. So it controls the amplitude of the problem frequencies and somehow controls the reflected sound as well. I really have no idea how they do it. My request for more explanations got stuck in Japan. Suimasen. But the fact is that it brought me more focus and better lows, while the studio upstairs is already fairly optimized. Doing the calibration is a breeze. Plug in the supplied microphone. Place it at the position of your head at the listening position using a tripod and press the OK button on the remote control. The N2000 starts with pink noise bursts increasing in loudness followed by a warble tone on the left channel, followed by the same signals on the right channel. A few minutes later the display asks you to press OK again and you're set. It's that simple. To see the ultimate quality the N2000 can deliver, it was connected to the loudspeakers of my set of one, the PMC FAC12 signature loudspeakers on isoacoustic Gaia 2 isolators and connected over AudioQuest Robinhood Zero loudspeaker cable. The network connection was over a normal patch cable to the SOTM SNH 10G network switch. The Synology DS1890 Plus NAS with DX517 extender running Minim server again was the DNA server. Finally I tested the HDMI input by connecting the HDMI ARC output of my Panasonic Plasma to the N2000. I had my doubts about connecting the N2000 to my 21K PCMs. They have a low efficiency of 84 dBs and do need real driver control. On the other hand, in the lows the impedance does not go below 5 ohms and doesn't have a steep phase angle anywhere, which is in favour of the combination. I started off switching the pure direct mode on, so no tone control, no loudness and no room correction. I normally use the Air Acoustics AX520 amp connected to the Core Dave DAC and the Grim Audio Mu1 digital player here over 40k of equipment, so a direct comparison would be extremely unfair. But it was rather surprising how well the N2000 did. It can't match the very high resolution of my own equipment, but when I connect the Marantz amp from my setup 2 here, the limitations are far more clear to hear. The N2000 sounded full bodied, clean, in control and produces a proper stereo image. After measuring in the YPAO room correction, the same improvements in focus took place as experienced in the studio. But now I missed the real deep lows a bit. Perhaps the system works better in one room and less perfect in the other. Or perhaps that with more experimenting with a different loudspeaker placement, better results can be obtained. When switching to TV over HDMI, everything worked fine. 
It's so nice to play the TV sound over a good stereo when compared to the TV's own sound. For most people, 3,799 euros will be a lot of money, but for this amp it's a steal. It of course isn't an amp, it's a complete stereo save the loudspeakers. It's an FM and DAB plus receiver, a comprehensive network player with direct access to popular streaming services, a quality DAC, a room correction system and an amp in one box. It not only needs less space, than the separate components, it's also a lot easier to operate. If your TV matches, you can even control your TV over the N2000 remote using CAC over HDMI. Which brings us to the end of this video. I'll be back next Friday at 5 pm Central European time. If you don't want to miss that, subscribe to my channel or follow me on the social media so you will be informed when new videos are out. Help me reach even more people by giving this video a thumb up or a link to this video on the social media. It is much appreciated. Many thanks to those viewers that support this channel financially, especially in these times. It keeps me independent and lets me improve the channel further. If that makes you feel like supporting my work too, the links are in the comments below this video in YouTube. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the HBproject.com. Whatever you do, enjoy the music.